the heart of Los Angeles, beneath the vast, sprawling canvas of a city pulsating with life, lay an apartment holding a chilling secret. The morning sun, filtering through the blinds, cast long shadows across the room, where the stillness was profound and unsettling. It was a scene frozen in time, a tableau of tragedy. Sherry Rasmussen, a young woman in the prime of her life, lay motionless on the cold floor of her own home. Her serene face belied the violence that had snatched her life away. The apartment, once a sanctuary of love and laughter, was now a chaotic mess, a testament to a struggle that had ended in the worst way imaginable. The Los Angeles Police Department, seasoned in navigating the city's underbelly of crime, found themselves at the doorstep of a case that was anything but ordinary. The scene was perplexing, with no clear motive or suspect in sight. What caught the detective's eyes, however, was a distinct mark that stood out amidst the chaos. An unusual bite mark on Sherry's body, an indelible signature left by the perpetrator. As the detectives began to peel back the layers of this mysterious case, they could not have imagined the labyrinth of secrets, lies, and betrayals they were about to uncover. The investigation, destined to span decades, would shake the very foundations of trust within the community and the police force itself. In this city of angels and demons, the pursuit of truth would become a journey through the shadows, where justice seemed as elusive as the morning mist in the canyons of Los Angeles. This was more than just a murder investigation. It was a journey into the heart of darkness, where the line between right and wrong was blurred, and the cost of truth was higher than anyone could have anticipated. In the verdant landscapes of Washington State, on a brisk winter day in 1957, Sherry Rasmussen came into the world. Her arrival was celebrated by her loving parents and two doting sisters in a home where laughter was abundant and love was the unspoken language. Sherry's childhood was a tapestry of bright colors, woven with the threads of kinship and warmth. As Sherry grew, she blossomed into a brilliant and driven young girl. Her intelligence shone like a beacon, guiding her path. She was not just another face in the crowded hallways of her school. She was a star that burned brighter with each passing year. Her family watched with pride, as she achieved milestones with a grace and ease that seemed almost effortless. The Rasmussen home in Tucson, Arizona, became a crucible of learning and growth for Sherry. She absorbed knowledge like a sponge her curious mind always hungry for more. The walls of their home echoed with her laughter and the clatter of books, the soundtrack of a happy, industrious childhood. Sherry's academic prowess was not just a source of pride for her family. It was a beacon of hope, a promise of a bright future. She outpaced her peers, completing her schooling ahead of schedule, a feat that spoke volumes about her determination and capability. In Sherry's heart, a dream was taking shape, a dream of a life dedicated to caring for others. She envisioned herself clad in the white garb of a nurse, a guardian angel to those in need. This dream guided her to the halls of a Californian college, where the next chapter of her life awaited. As she embarked on this journey, Sherry carried with her more than just books and aspirations. She carried the hopes and dreams of her family, the love and guidance of her parents, and the unbreakable bond with her sisters. In her heart was a reservoir of strength that would see her through the challenges ahead. The Golden Sun of California welcomed Sherry Rasmussen as she embarked on her new journey. The vibrant energy of Los Angeles, a city of dreams and relentless ambition, was in stark contrast to the tranquil life she had known. But Sherry, with her indomitable spirit, was more than ready to embrace this new chapter. In the bustling corridors of the Californian College, Sherry's presence was like a fresh breeze. Her enthusiasm for learning and her compassionate nature made her a beloved figure among her peers. She wasn't just pursuing a degree, she was pursuing a calling. Nursing was not only a profession for Sherry, it was a way to touch lives, to heal, to bring comfort where there was pain. Her journey was not without challenges. The rigor of medical education demanded long hours of study, unending dedication, and a resilience that only a few possessed. But Sherry, with her characteristic grace and determination, rose to meet every challenge. 
She wasn't merely navigating the world of academia. She was mastering it. Sherry's decision to specialize in nursing was not just a career choice. It was a reflection of her innermost being. Her empathy and care for others shone through in every action, every decision she made. It was this compassion that led her to take on additional courses, to delve deeper into the world of medicine. The years rolled by, and Sherry's hard work bore fruit. She graduated with honors, her name etched in the annals of the college as a student who had truly made a mark. But she didn't stop there. The world of academia still called to her, beckoning her to reach even greater heights. Sherry's next destination was the prestigious State University of Los Angeles, where she embarked on a journey to obtain her master's degree. The campus became her second home, her sanctuary of learning. She juggled her studies with a job at the university's hospital, a testament to her unwavering commitment to her profession. In those hallowed halls and busy wards, Sherry wasn't just a student or a nurse. She was a rising star, a beacon of hope and care. She led the nursing department for critically ill patients, a role that tested her skills and her heart. But in every patient she cared for, in every life she touched, Sherry found the fulfillment of her dreams. As she navigated the challenges and triumphs of her life in Los Angeles, Sherry remained grounded in the values her family had instilled in her. Her heart, always full of love, was about to embark on a new journey, one that would intertwine her destiny with another, setting the stage for a love story that would change her life forever. In the spring of 1984, as Los Angeles basked in the warmth of the sun, Sherry Rasmussen's life took a serendipitous turn. It was at a local gathering where fate played its hand, bringing John Ruiten into her world. John, a young man with an intelligent gaze and an easy smile, was a computer engineer, his mind as sharp as the technology he worked with. Their meeting was nothing short of electric. From the very first exchange of glances, a connection was sparked, a bond that seemed to have been written in the stars. John was immediately captivated by Sherry's radiant personality, her intelligence, and the kindness that seemed to emanate from her. The courtship that followed was a whirlwind of emotions, a dance of two hearts perfectly in sync. Their love story was one of mutual respect, shared dreams, and an understanding that transcended words. With each passing day, their bond deepened, painting their lives with hues of joy and companionship. A year later, as the summer of 1985 adorned Los Angeles with its vibrant colors, Sherry and John decided to seal their love in the eternal bond of marriage. The ceremony was a celebration of love, attended by family and friends who shared in their happiness. It was a union not just of two individuals, but of two souls. John, embracing his new life with Sherry, moved into her apartment, a cozy abode that soon became a haven of their love. Their days were filled with shared laughter, plans for the future, and the comfort of each other's presence. The newlyweds in their blissful bubble seemed invincible against the world. Their honeymoon in Jamaica was a chapter straight out of a fairy tale. The pristine beaches, the serene sunsets, and the melody of the waves created a backdrop for memories that would last a lifetime. As they returned home to celebrate their first Christmas as a married couple, the future seemed bright, filled with endless possibilities. Sherry, now 26, was at the pinnacle of her career and personal life. Her relationship with John was a source of immense happiness, a complement to her professional success. Together, they embarked on a journey of building a life, a future that seemed destined for happiness and fulfillment. But as the wheel of fate would have it, their story was to take a turn, a twist in the narrative that would lead to a series of events, changing the course of their lives forever. Unbeknownst to them, the seeds of a tragic mystery were being sown, a mystery that would echo through the halls of time, leaving a trail of questions and heartache. February 24th dawned like any other day in Los Angeles, but for Sherry Rasmussen, it would be unlike any other. The morning air was crisp, the city slowly stirring to life, but within the walls of Sherry and in John's apartment, a sinister shadow loomed. Sherry, normally the epitome of health and vitality, woke up feeling unwell. John, 
concerned yet reassured by her insistence that it was nothing serious, prepared for work. Their morning routine, usually filled with shared moments and loving exchanges, was subdued, marked by Sherry's unusual lethargy. As John left for work, the usual goodbye was exchanged, but an unspoken worry lingered in the air. Little did he know, this departure marked the last moment of normalcy in their lives. Hours passed, the city bustling with its usual rhythm. John, immersed in his work, felt a nagging concern for Sherry. Attempting to reach her by phone and receiving no response, his worry deepened. Unanswered calls led to a growing sense of unease that something was amiss. The clock ticked on, and the silence from Sherry's end became deafening. John's attempts to reach her at work proved futile. She hadn't shown up for her shift. The puzzle pieces of concern started to form a disturbing picture. By evening, John's apprehension turned into dread as he returned home. The sight that greeted him was one of alarming abnormality. The garage door, which he distinctly remembered closing in the morning, was ajar. Sherry's car was nowhere to be seen. His heart pounding, John entered the house, a sense of foreboding enveloping him. The chaos that met his eyes was a scene from a nightmare. The disarray spoke of a violent struggle. Overturned furniture, shattered vases, personal belongings strewn across the floor. But nothing prepared him for the horrific sight that lay in the midst of this turmoil. Sherry, his beloved wife, lay motionless on the floor. Her body bore the brutal marks of a savage attack. Her life extinguished in the very place they had built their dreams. In that moment, John's world shattered, a piercing scream of anguish echoing through the empty halls. The police arrived, the apartment quickly transforming into a crime scene. Detectives meticulously calmed through the chaos, each clue adding to the complexity of the case. Among the disarray, one piece of evidence stood out. A distinct, human bite mark on Sherry's body, a silent testament to the struggle she endured. As the investigation commenced, the questions multiplied. Who could have committed such a heinous act? Was it a random act of violence? or something more sinister. The answers lay hidden in the shadows of that ill-fated morning, waiting to be uncovered in a tale of obsession, jealousy, and betrayal. In the wake of Sherry Rasmussen's tragic demise, the Los Angeles Police Department faced a puzzle that seemed to defy logic. The crime scene was a cacophony of chaos and unanswered questions, with the bite mark on Sherry's body standing as a silent witness to her final struggle. The initial theory woven by the detectives was one of a robbery gone awry. Sherry's missing car and the disheveled state of the apartment seemed to support this narrative. However, as the investigation delved deeper, inconsistencies began to emerge, casting a shadow of doubt over the robbery hypothesis. No signs of forced entry were evident. The apartment, though in disarray, still held valuables untouched by the supposed burglars. This contradiction was puzzling. Why would robbers leave behind easily stolen treasures? The detectives pondered the possibility of Sherry having known her attacker, someone who could have gained entry without breaking in. The absence of forced entry suggested a chilling possibility. The assailant might have been welcomed into the home, or worse, had access to it. The stolen car, later found abandoned, offered no further clues. Its discovery only deepened the mystery, leaving the detectives grappling with more questions than answers. As the investigation continued, neighbors were interviewed, hoping for eyewitness accounts or any detail that could shed light on the events of that fateful day. While some reported hearing the sounds of a struggle, none could provide a definitive account of who had entered or left the apartment. The police, in their quest for answers, collected fingerprints and blood samples from the crime scene. Yet, in the era before advanced DNA analysis, these samples offered limited leads. The technology of the time was a constraint they couldn't overcome, leaving the bite mark as a clue with potential yet untapped. The case, with its twists and turns, seemed to be veering into a cul-de-sac of mysteries. The robbery angle, with its glaring gaps, was becoming increasingly untenable. Yet, in the absence of concrete evidence, it remained the prevailing theory a narrative incomplete and unconvincing. 
Behind the scenes, a storm of frustration and grief brewed within Sherry's family. Her parents, grappling with the loss of their beloved daughter, struggled to comprehend the senseless violence that had shattered their lives. They yearned for justice, for answers that seemed to slip further away with each passing day. As the sun set on Los Angeles, the shadows grew longer in the Rasmussen household, a family haunted by the specter of an unsolved crime. The mystery of Sherry's death, like a dark cloud, hung over them, a reminder of the fragility of life and the elusiveness of truth in a city where not all that glitters is gold. In the intricate web of Sherry Rasmussen's murder investigation, a name emerged from the shadows of the past, casting a new light on the case. Stephanie Lazarus. Stephanie, a police officer and John Rutten's ex-girlfriend, was a figure who had hovered on the periphery of the couple's life, her presence an unsettling undercurrent. Sherry's father, driven by a father's instinct and the gnawing pain of loss, implored the detectives to consider Stephanie as a person of interest. He recounted tales Sherry had shared, tales of Stephanie's unsettling behavior, her inability to let go of John, and her obsessive tendencies. But these pleas fell on deaf ears, dismissed as the ramblings of a grief-stricken father. Stephanie Lazarus, in the eyes of her colleagues in the police department, was a respected officer, her reputation seemingly unblemished. The notion that one of their own could be involved in such a heinous act was met with skepticism and outright denial. To them, the theory seemed far-fetched, the product of too many crime dramas. The dismissive attitude of the detectives left Sherry's family in a state of despair. Their suspicions, they felt, were being ignored, the potential lead on Stephanie not being pursued with the rigor it deserved. The investigation, in their eyes, was becoming a tale of missed opportunities and unexplored avenues. Meanwhile, the figure of Stephanie Lazarus loomed like a ghost from John and Sherry's past. Sherry had confided in her family about encounters with Stephanie, confrontations that were marked by veiled threats and an air of hostility. Stephanie's inability to accept John's marriage to Sherry was a source of concern, a red flag that was now being pieced together in the aftermath of tragedy. But the police, entrenched in their beliefs and theories, continued to chase shadows in other directions. The focus remained on the robbery angle, with detectives coming through leads that led to dead ends. The possibility of a jilted lover turned murderer was a path left untraveled, a chapter in the story that remained closed. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the case of Sherry Rasmussen became a file gathering dust, a cold case in the annals of the Los Angeles Police Department. The family's cries for justice echoed in the void, their pleas for a re-examination of Stephanie's potential involvement unanswered. In this city of angels, where the bright lights often cast the deepest shadows. The truth about Sherry's untimely demise remained buried, a puzzle waiting for the missing piece to emerge. It was a tale of love, loss, and unheeded warnings, a narrative waiting for its next twist. As the years slipped by, the murder of Sherry Rasmussen transitioned into a cold case, its file lying dormant in the depths of the Los Angeles Police Department archives. The once fervent pace of the investigation had dwindled to a haunting silence, leaving the Rasmussen family trapped in a limbo of unresolved grief. But the march of time brought with it a revolution in forensic science, one that held the key to unlocking mysteries that had long been consigned to the shadows. The advent of advanced DNA analysis emerged as a beacon of hope in the realm of criminal investigation, a tool that had the potential to breathe new life into cold cases. In the early 2000s, amidst this evolving landscape of forensic technology, Sherry's case was revisited. A new generation of detectives, unburdened by the preconceptions of their predecessors, took a fresh look at the evidence collected years ago. Amongst the items preserved was the crucial piece of evidence that had been overlooked, the swab from the bite mark on Sherry's body. The DNA analysis, once a distant possibility, was now a tangible pathway to answers. The sample was submitted for testing, and the wait for results began, each day a step closer to a revelation that could unravel the mystery of Sherry's death. Meanwhile, Stephanie Lazarus, the once-overlooked suspect, 
had risen through the ranks of the police force, her career trajectory painting a picture of success and respectability. But the DNA test, a silent arbiter of truth, was about to challenge the narrative that had protected her for years. As the forensic experts worked, a parallel investigation was quietly reignited. The detectives delved into the past, unearthing the details of Stephanie's relationship with John, her interactions with Sherry, and the strange circumstances surrounding the case. The Rasmussen family, once resigned to a life without closure, felt a flicker of hope. The advances in forensic science, which had seemed like distant miracles in the past, were now their allies in the quest for justice. The possibility that the DNA sample could unveil the face of Sherry's killer rekindled their desire for answers, for the truth that had eluded them for so long. The turning of the calendar pages brought the year 2009, a year that would mark a pivotal shift in the cold case of Sherry Rasmussen. The Los Angeles Police Department, now armed with the powerful tool of DNA analysis, stood on the cusp of unraveling a mystery that had confounded them for over two decades. As the forensic experts analyzed the sample from the bite mark, the DNA profile that emerged was a bombshell. It belonged to a woman, a revelation that steered the investigation in a direction long ignored. The focus shifted, with renewed intensity, to Stephanie Lazarus, a name that had lingered in the background, a shadow in the tragic story of Sherry and John. Stephanie, a seasoned police officer with a stellar career, found herself under a microscope. The detectives, treading cautiously in the delicate task of investigating one of their own, embarked on a covered operation to obtain a fresh DNA sample from Stephanie, one that could be compared to the evidence from the crime scene. The opportunity presented itself in an unsuspecting moment. Stephanie, off-duty and unaware of the silent eyes watching her, left behind a crucial piece of evidence, a discarded item with her DNA. The sample was swiftly collected and sent for analysis, the detectives holding their breath for the results that could potentially close a chapter of anguish and unanswered questions. Meanwhile, the Rasmussen family, once resigned to a life without answers, watched as the gears of justice, long stagnant, began to turn. The possibility that the truth was within reach brought a mix of emotions, hope, anger, and a deep-seated desire for closure. The DNA results arrived, and with them, a thunderous blow to the veil of mystery shrouding Sherry's death. Stephanie Lazarus's DNA was a match to the sample from the crime scene. The revelation sent shockwaves through the police department, challenging the bonds of blue and shaking the foundations of trust within the force. In a tactical move, detectives orchestrated Stephanie's arrest away from the prying eyes of her colleagues. The arrest of a fellow officer, especially one of Stephanie's rank and reputation, was a delicate operation. Fraught with tension and the weight of implications, Stephanie, confronted with the irrefutable evidence, found herself entangled in a web of her own making. The mask of the respected officer fell away, revealing a face marred by obsession and jealousy a face capable of a brutality that had remained hidden behind a badge. The arrest sent ripples through the community, a stark reminder that the face of evil can sometimes be one of familiarity, hiding in plain sight. For the Rasmussen family, the arrest was a bittersweet moment, a step towards justice, yet a stark reminder of the irreparable loss they had suffered. As Stephanie Lazarus was taken into custody, the cold case that had haunted Los Angeles for over two decades began to thaw, revealing a tangled web of love, jealousy, and betrayal. The stage was set for a trial that would lay bare the dark secrets of the past, bringing closure to a family and shaking the very foundations of the Los Angeles Police Department. The trial of Stephanie Lazarus was a culmination of years of pain, a saga of loss and betrayal. As the courtroom filled with the eager gazes of the media, the Rasmussen family, and a community shaken by the revelation, a palpable tension hung in the air. The prosecution laid out a narrative that was both compelling and chilling. Evidence, once overlooked, now took center stage. The DNA from the bite mark, the testimonies about Stephanie's obsessive behavior towards John, and her inability to accept his marriage to Sherry. 
The story that unfolded was one of a love turned poisonous, a jealousy that spiraled into a heinous act of violence. Stephanie, in the defendant's chair, seemed a far cry from the respected police officer she once was. As the details of her past actions and the conclusive DNA evidence were laid bare, the facade of the dedicated officer crumbled, revealing the depths of her deception. The defense's attempts to cast doubt on the DNA evidence and to portray Stephanie as a victim of circumstance fell on skeptical ears. The weight of the evidence was overwhelming, painting a picture of a premeditated act driven by a passion that had crossed the line into madness. As the trial progressed, the Rasmussen family sat with bated breath, their years of anguish and pursuit of justice culminating in these decisive moments. Each testimony, each piece of evidence, brought them closer to the closure they had longed for. Finally, the jury returned with a verdict that resonated through the courtroom. Guilty. Stephanie Lazarus was convicted of the murder of Sherry Rasmussen, a sentence that brought a measure of justice to a wound that had festered for over two decades. The sentence, 27 years to life, was a declaration that even those behind a badge were not above the law. It was a vindication of the truth, a truth that had been buried under layers of time and doubt. For the Rasmussen family, the verdict was a bittersweet resolution. While it brought closure and a sense of justice, it also served as a stark reminder of the irreplaceable loss of Sherry. The vibrant, compassionate woman whose life was tragically cut short would always be remembered, her legacy living on in the hearts of those who loved her. As the gavel fell, signaling the end of the trial, a chapter closed in the tragic saga of Sherry Resmussen's life and death. The conviction of Stephanie Lazarus was a testament to the relentless pursuit of justice, a reminder that truth, no matter how long buried, has a way of coming to light. In the quiet aftermath, as the Resmussen family walked out of the courtroom, there was a sense of peace, a feeling that Sherry, their beloved daughter, sister and wife, could finally rest in peace. The journey had been long and fraught with pain, but in the end, justice had prevailed in the City of Angels.